Hi, I'm Lucy from Sew Essential and I'm here today with a roundup of the Great British Sewing Bee Series 8 Episodes 1 to 5. So don't worry, there's no spoilers here. I won't tell you who stays or goes, but what I will do is pick out a pattern for the pattern challenge for each week and the made to measure challenge for each week and also maybe talk about some tips and tutorials and things that you can refer to as well to sew along with the bees. Everything I talk about today is available on our lovely website and you'll find links to all the products I mention and our website below and if you like what you see today please like and subscribe because every Friday I bring you a video packed full of sewing goodness and if you can't wait a whole week do jump on and check out our social media accounts below as well. So let's get started with the video. So Obviously I am limited on time here so I've just picked out one pattern challenge pattern and one made to measure challenge pattern and I'll show you those and talk you through those but as I said at the start of the video there is a blog post where you can find lots more ideas and inspiration every single week. I give multiple suggestions for the two challenges and then I'm going to try and do a video for the remaining weeks. I'll try and do a weekly video so I can give you lots more inspiration for each of the challenges for each week but let's just have a little fun recap of what's happened so far I think it's been a really good series so far lots of super talented sewers so the first week saw the sewers challenged with a capsule wardrobe so they had to for the pattern challenge they had to make a mini skirt a wool a-line mini skirt with patch pockets so it was a nice simple skirt to sew but the patch pockets had to be piped around the edge so that was quite tricky and proved quite the challenge for a lot of the bees and I think it would be for most people it's quite a sort of intricate job getting even piping therefore we did share a tutorial on how to get absolutely brilliant results with piping and that was in our blog post for the first week and I'll also pop a link to that tutorial below for you as well loads and loads of tips in there and um, things such as you know how to prepare the piping how to sew the piping also tips around piping feet for your sewing machine which we stock on the website so I'll pop links to those below but the pattern I chose for this challenge was Birda 6147 which comes in sizes 8 to 18 it's got uh, the 8 is a 31 and a half weight uh, bust 24 and a half waist 34 hip and the 18 is a 32 and a half waist and 41 and three quarter hip don't think you need the bust measurements for a skirt do you so sorry about that um but this skirt it's not bang on because it has got a waistband however it's got that simple a-line shape it's not quite so mini as the ones on the sewing bee were which for i think most of us um probably feel comfortable with a slightly longer sh uh, hem length than that but it did have patch pockets with a flap so I thought well you could just omit the flap and you could move the patch pockets up the skirt if you wanted to because they're quite low on the skirt but the other thing I liked about this pattern as well is it's got an option for a hem flounce as well so I thought you know you wouldn't just be able to do the sewing bee challenge with it you'd also be able to make a nice skirt for summer as well um, so that was my choice for that one I think the hem flounce one would be lovely and then the made to measure challenge was a great one for week one it was wrap dresses which are just you know the most useful thing you can ever have in your wardrobe relatively easy to sew the main challenge with a wrap dress is not having a gaping neckline at the front um, if you're making a jersey wrap dress I've got a good tip on how to avoid that which is to sew some clear elastic into the neckline which I've shown before on some of my videos um, and that will avoid that gaping um, but lots of the bees sewed woven um, wrap dresses as well so it wasn't just jersey wrap dresses and the pattern I chose for this one is McCall's 7745 which is a pattern I've had a love affair with that is um, needs to be realised because I've cooed over this pattern from afar ever since it was first released and I still haven't made it but it's an absolute beauty um, it runs in sizes 6 to 22 
So a six is a 30 and a half bust, 23 waist and 32 and a half hip. And a 22 is a 44 bust, 37 waist and 46 hip. Um, but it also comes with cup sizes, which is fantastic. Um, so if you're somebody who sometimes has to make a small bust adjustment or a full bust adjustment, it comes with cup sizes um, for an A and B, C, D. Um, so that might mean that you don't have to worry about making a bust adjustment with this pattern, which is great. Um, it's got lots of pretty views and I thought it was very of the essence of a lot of the sewing bee wrap dresses that I saw. Um, very floaty, it's got a flounce option. Um, it's got an option with little cap sleeves and a flounce that runs down the neckline all the way down the skirt and then around the hem. Um, it's got an option where you haven't got the flounce around the skirt and you've just got it around the neckline. It's got an option where you've got little spaghetti straps and then like a cold shoulder ruffle um, or flounce sort of, um, uh, sort of sleeve. Um, really, really pretty. Would sew it beautifully in lots of our rayons and crepes that we've got on the website. Remember, all of these are linked below, so you'll find everything you need on our website linked below. Um, and my favourite dress from this episode was definitely Annie's African wax print dress, which was very much of this sort of floaty, feminine, um, flouncy sort of um, style. I just thought it looked absolutely beautiful. I thought it looked really well sewn. The fabric was gorgeous. It, it was just a, a wonderful make and a really good start to week one. I mean, I couldn't believe the level of sewing in that first week. It was really amazing. So on to week two then. Week two was sports week. So this had a real curveball in it. Um, the first time ever the sewing bees were asked to make a pair of high top trainers. So um, hands up who's made a pair of high top trainers before. I'm guessing there's not many hands going up, uh, me included. I haven't done that. So we didn't have a pattern for high top trainers unsurprisingly, but the tasks that the bees really had to focus on for this um, challenge were doing the eyelets evenly um, on the trainer and I thought well you use eyelets on like a hoodie drawstring or jogging bottom drawstrings or on like duffel bags you might have a drawstring so you know that might be a technique that you just want to try out rather than make the trainers and in the blog post I featured a lot of the tools that we've got we've got loads of the prim tools for making the holes and securing the eyelets but they can also be used for snaps um, snap fasteners as well so um, all of that information is in the blog post but the other thing that I thought you could do to sew along with the bees in a really fun way with this challenge would be to customize a pair of high top trainers or I've seen it done on like converse trainers bands trainers um, not all only high tops but like the low level canvas pumps as well um, and you can hand embroider with our DMC threads um, you can do the most beautiful embroidery designs on a pair of canvas trainers I've seen loads of them on Instagram they just look absolutely gorgeous and I thought that would be a really fun way to sew along with the bees if you're not up for doing a whole pair of trainers yet and then on to the made to measure challenge they had to make a sports jacket inspired by their favourite sporting hero. So I thought that was a really fun task. Um, lots and lots of really cool designs. There were sort of like over the head designs with a half zip and um, quite retro designs with chevron, a chevron effect. Um, like more rain jacket type designs. Um, the pattern I chose for this challenge was a Mimi G pattern, which is eight, seven, Simplicity 8702. And that runs in sizes um, from a 30 and a half bust, 23 waist and 32 and a half hip up to a 46 bust, 39 waist and 48 hip. It also comes with a pair of leggings as well. Um, and it's for stretch knits, it's for like scubas and like stable knits. Um, and it's just a really super cool design. I think a couple of the same bees actually use this one. It's got that lovely chevron effect on the bodice. Great opportunity for color blocking. 
on the sleeves as well it's got like stripes down the sleeves which is another opportunity for color blocking um, it's a zip up with a little fold over collar and then they've suggested using ribbing for the cuffs and the hem we stock ribbing on our website as well so you can find that and scuba fabric on our website that you could sew this one up in and my favorite from this week was brogan's jessica ennis hill inspired jacket i thought it was really lovely it was one of these ones um, with the color blocking and she used navy blue and red and white so very sort of great britain themed um, but then she threw a bit of pale pink in there as well which i thought was a nice unusual twist and we've got all those colors of scuba on the website so you could have a go at recreating that jacket um, but yeah what a fun challenge that was for the bees so on to week three and again just remember everything I'm talking about is available on our site but also there is a blog post below where I've got lots of other ideas for patterns, tutorials um, to sew along with the bees as well so do check that out if you haven't already. But week three was summer week which is always exciting. Who doesn't love sewing for summer? It's certainly my favourite. I just want to make all the pretty dresses for summer um, and it was nice because the bees got some really lovely challenges here so the first one that they had was to sew a dress with shirring on it so shirring if you don't know is when you use shirring elastic or elastic thread we do some little thin elastic thread in lots of different colors that you can use you hand wind it round your bobbin and then you put normal thread in the top and you sew um, rows of um, elastic across the bodice or wherever you put in the detail and it just gathers it up and creates this lovely pretty effect um, so yeah we stock up all the elastic as I say I'll pop links to that below um, but a really nice challenge to get started with you know when, once you get going with the sharing I did put lots of tips in the blog post as well about how to get it nice and even how to get good results so do check that out um, but once you get going it's really relatively easy to sew and you, it's quite sort of therapeutic really I quite like those sewing tasks where you can just get into your groove get into a rhythm and just go with it um, the pattern I chose for this challenge is McCall's 7946 which comes in sizes 4 to 20 so a 4 is a 29 and a half bust 22 waist and 31 and a half hip and a 20 is a 42 bust 34 waist and 44 hip um, it's a pullover dress so no fastenings to worry about it's a nice simple easy so great for beginners um, it's got options for short sleeves sleeveless three quarter sleeves the short and three quarter sleeves are puff sleeves um, or sundress straps so loads of mileage in this loads of quite different looks from one pattern um, and then it's got different skirt lengths as well and hem options so um, the hem options you can have a short or long tier on the bottom of the skirt um, really pretty pattern and I did just pick out a fabric for this one I haven't done it for all of them um, but I just thought this would work beautifully this John Caldor Lizano fabric it's a cotton um, I've used this before to make a really pretty blouse and I just thought that would look lovely sewn up into that dress for summer and then for the made to measure challenge the bees had to sew I thought this was a really cool challenge as well actually um, a two-piece coordinated set uh, trousers or short set so there were some quite different ideas here um, some people did men's some people did women's um, I personally haven't got any of these coordinated sets in my wardrobe wardrobe and it made me think I really need to do it because I love the look of them um, when I went to the big sew off recently um, there was a lady there Holly Dennett wearing the most gorgeous coordinated set and we were talking about as well the fact that you can wear them together but then obviously you could wear the top with some different bottoms you could wear the bottoms with a different top so you get a lot of mileage out of these um, coordinated sets Anyway, the pattern I chose for this one was Vogue 9319, which is just glorious in my opinion. Absolutely love this pattern. It runs in sizes 6 to a 22, so a 6 is 30 and a half bust, 23 waist, 32 and a half hip, and the 22 is a 44 bust, 37 waist, and 46 hip, and it's got two options so you've got lovely floaty wide leg shorts high-waisted with a deep yoke on the um, front and back 
it's got pockets and a back zip and then you've got the little top that ties um, in the middle and it's got wide sort of floaty sleeves like flared a-line sort of sleeves um, and I think I talked about this sort of style. This is really on trend at the moment. And I talked about the, you know, exposing um, the midriff. Like sometimes people might not feel comfortable with that. But a lot of these patterns, the trousers and the skirts are very high waisted. So actually, you're not really um, exposing the lower half of, of your tummy. It's more like where your ribs are. So it's not as sort of exposing as, as it might feel if it was lower down, in my opinion. People might feel differently, you know, that, that's fine. Um, but then the other option is you've got these really dramatic wide leg, full length trousers, and then it's like a shirt at the front. It's got like a fold back uh, revere type collar. Um, it's still got the tie at the front and then long sleeves, really dramatic look, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this pattern, they recommend making it with uh, crepes, rayons, chambrays, things with a bit of drape and movement. But I think you could probably make those trousers in a more structured um, fabric as well. But yeah, just ultra 70s sort of retro cool girl vibes. Absolutely love this pattern. Um, my favourite from the Made to Measure challenge this week was Man Yi. She did a really cute um, like bralette top and um, flared shorts oh, in this lemon print fabric and the way the bralette fitted the model was just fantastic. <laughs> I don't know how they do it in the time they've got, I really don't. It was just perfect, it just fit her bust perfect and that must have been so difficult to do. Um, I loved the lemon fabric as well and I did spot Brogan was wearing lemons that week as well and I just had to show you this fabric that we've got which is a cotton sateen um, with the lemon print I think it might even be the one Brogan was wearing it's just gorgeous glorious perfect for summer it's been flying out the door we have ordered more in so that's good um, I want to get my hands on some but I'm not sure whether I will because it's going really well but I just thought I'd share that with you for a bit of inspiration as well and then on to week four, which was reduce, reuse and recycle week. So um, focused on sustainability, using what we've got at our fingertips and um, making use of scraps of fabric, that sort of thing. So the bee started off in the pattern challenge with... Um, a patchwork jacket. Now we've got two or three patterns on the website that are totally suited to this task and I put them in the blog post. Don't forget the blog post will be linked below and there's loads more ideas and inspiration in there. I'm limited on this video because I've squished five weeks into one but going forward I'm going to try and do each week individually for you so I can put more inspiration for each episode into the video um, but yeah the pattern challenge was a patchwork jacket and the two patterns that we've got that work for this have sold out they've sold out here they're out of stock on the website and they've sold out at our supplier however they are coming back into stock so my suggestion would be I'm going to show you them now if you like them bookmark them and then when when they come back in stock you know they're yours for the taking but the two patterns are the grain line tamarack jacket and the megan nielsen javier jacket so my choice is going to be the megan nielsen javier jacket um because there are just so many options with this jacket i've shown it you before um it's a loose fit drop shoulder jacket it's got options for multiple lengths deep angled feature pockets. You can go for an unlined jacket, a fully lined jacket, or a quilted jacket. Um, there's belt or tie closures that you can make and also collar bands and binding options as well. So, so many options with that pattern. Definitely worth bookmarking and checking out. It's been really popular this year and um, I think, you know, it, it will be going forward. There's no doubt about it. It's just a great, great, pattern um, the things that I didn't mention in the blog post I put a link to our um, top tips for quilters for toolkit recommendations in the blog post so do check that out but I mentioned rotary cutters um, cutting mats and also uh, quilters rulers because you know if you want to get a really neat finish accuracy is absolutely key with patchwork so that was so important for the bees and those tools will help you to get great results 
as will a quarter inch sewing machine foot, which we do on our website as well. So all these details are in the blog post. Um, but yeah, there were just my little tips for you if you want to get involved in a bit of patchwork. And then the made to measure challenge was a maxi dress. So another wonderful challenge in my book. I love a maxi dress, can't get enough of them. Um, and there were some lovely designs uh, created. I couldn't believe what they did with duvet covers, really beautiful designs. My pattern pick, I think, was one of the ones, one of the bees used, and it's Butterick 6678. Um, which I think could easily be overlooked, but actually has got a really contemporary um, view, which is view B, um, which is a sleeveless option. It's got a V-neck, bust darts coming up from the sort of empire line waist. And then it's got like a flared skirt that's finished with a deep ruffle hem. And I think one of the sewing bees used this pattern. Really gorgeous pattern. There's also options for a short sleeve, which has got a ruffle um, hem finish to it, which I think is a really nice feature and I haven't seen before, I don't think. Um, I've made a blouse with that before, but I don't think I've seen a dress with it. And that's just got like a straight knee length skirt or it's a slightly flared, a flared knee length skirt. And then there's also an option um, for a, a skirt with three tiers or two tiers rather, um, which is more of a maxi length as well. So lots of options in there again. And my favorite from the episode had to be Annie's dress. Um, she made a beautiful dress in like a dark green um, duvet cover, but she inserted lace strips um, in various different places on the dress, which I thought was a really clever idea, something I would never think to do, and it just looked so effective. Um, it was beautiful, and I think definitely the sewing bees that chose the darker coloured duvets, theirs probably look more like clothes, whereas like, I think some of the lighter coloured duvets, it might have been a bit more obvious, but um, that it was a duvet but having said that I think they all did really well again there were just some beautiful beautiful designs so definitely well worth a watch and then finally bringing us up to date it was children's week this week so um, I don't ever sew for children myself and you know, I, I sort of don't get that excited about the Children's Week episode, but then every year I watch it and I see the stuff they make and particularly the costumes and I'm just blown away by the creativity. I think it is the opportunity for the bees in this episode to really use that creative flair um, and just sort of make something unconventional and that certainly happened this year there's some great great ideas so the first pattern challenge was the pattern challenge now they made a little sailor suit for the pattern challenge so it was separate so it was pull on shorts and a little sailor top we haven't got any patterns that match that brief but what we have got is a ridiculously cute sailor dress that you could make um, absolutely beautiful loads of lovely options it runs in sizes from six months to four years um, and it's um, a little it's a, a bodice with um, an, an optional necktie round it. You can go sleeveless. It's got a gathered sort of relatively full skirt, which just looks so cute when it comes out um, into that sort of almost A line. There's an option without the necktie just for like a little collar, um, like almost like a Peter Pan style collar and little buttons. And then cap sleeves that are gathered into elastic. Um, there's also an option with short sleeves and the necktie. Really cute, really lovely. I think it would look great. And we've got poly cotton uh, fabrics that are perfect for kids. We've got like a pink polka dot. We've got um, one with butterflies on it. But my choice, I just thought I'd show you this because I think it would work really well, is this royal blue um, swallow print cotton poplin fabric. It's really inexpensive, hard wearing, perfect for kids. And I just thought that would look great with that sort of nautical theme dress um, but ginghams as well we've got those on the site they might be worth a look at and then for the made to measure challenge oh wow they did um, a Halloween theme which is quite weird in May um, you know airing in May kind of felt a bit strange looking at Halloween costumes um, but you know maybe it'll inspire people to get ahead of the game I'm always in a last minute panic at Halloween for my kids so maybe people want to get ahead but some people sort of went a bit 
um, more American and did designs that weren't necessarily like spooky designs. Um, there were some really fun designs in there. Um, my pattern choice for this one is Simplicity 1765, which is a really cute dragon um, inspired pattern. So it's kind of like dinosaur slash dragon, um, but there's, it's like a onesie um, and it's got suggestions for sort of customizing it with spots. It's got a big chunky tail. It's got an option for spikes running all the way down from the top of the head to the bottom of the tail. It's got like the claws and everything on it um, you can really go to town with this one little wings as an option as well and then um, if you wanted to as well there, there is a, a little coat pattern for dogs in there as well but personally I think I'd just stick with the um, with the children's pattern on this one but this runs from sizes um, Oh, it's not telling me the sizes on there. Oh, small, medium and large. A small's third. Oh, no, sorry. That's the dog costume. The children's costume runs from a 22 chest, 20 and a half waist and up to a 27 chest, 23 and a half waist and a 28 hip. So, yeah, that was really cute. But um, my favourite costume had to be the Mrs. Havisham costume, which was just fantastic the way uh, the model looked in it was just amazing um, it did look really eerie and really spooky um, I think it would win any fancy dress costume competition anywhere you know it was just so good but a lot of fun to watch so I hope you've enjoyed that today as I say this was a quick roundup of those first five weeks I've just picked out one pattern for the video and thrown in a couple of tips and tools but if you do check out our blog post there's a lot more ideas and inspiration in there sign up for our newsletter and we include it in the newsletter while the sewing bees on as well and then next week I'll try and do an episode each week so I can give you lots more options and inspiration for each week as we head towards the second half of the sewing bee this year so I hope you enjoyed that everybody if you like what you see today please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time